In this video, we're going to look at a legal problem called number of provinces. So there are a number of cities. Some of them are connected, while some of them are not. So if city A is connected directly with city B, and city B is connected directly with city C, then the city A is connected indirectly with city C, right? So you can see here, um, a province is a group of directed or indirected connected cities, and no other cities outside of the group. So you're given a uh, n times n matrix is connected, where is connected at i at j is equal to 1, that means it's connected, right? And if i city and i uh, j city are directly connected, that means that it's connected at i at j is equal to 0. So return the total number of provinces, right? So you can see that we have city 1 is connected to city 2, but city 3 is not connected to anything. So we're returning how many provinces are we, uh, do we have in a graph, right? So you can see that this is one province, and this is just a separate province here. So you can see here we have a 2D array, and then the first basically represents that for the first element that we have, right? In this case, it's connected to itself, and also the second element, right? So that means one represents true, right? Represents that it's connected to the second element, which is two, no two and it's not connected to no 3, right? And then you can also see that um, we have 1, 1, 0. So that's the same thing for 2, right? It's connected to no 1, but and it's also connected to no, no 2 itself, but it's not connected to no 3. And for no 3, the last one, you can see that no 3 is um, not connected to no 0, uh, sorry, no 1. It's also not connected to no 2, but it's connected to itself. So we can see that we have a total of two provinces that we have, right? So, as you can also see here, uh, we can also have something like this, where they're all not connected. And basically, you can see that 1 is connected to itself, 2 is connected to itself, 3 is connected to itself as well, right? So these index represents the, these nodes, uh, represents referring to those nodes, right? Index 0 represents node 1, index 2 represents node 2, sorry, index 1 is represent node 2, index 3 is represent node 3, right? And it doesn't have to be this way. We can also rename it to zero. This is one, this is two, right? It doesn't really matter, but we just want to know based on this, how many nodes, how many provinces that we have. In this case, we have three, right? This is by itself. This is by itself. This is by itself, right? So how can we solve this problem? So to solve this problem, what we can do is we can use Unifine. And a couple of videos ago, um, I talked about how we can implement Unifine. What is Unifine? Um, and how does Unify work? So if you haven't watched that video, I can, uh, I'll put a link uh, right here and so that you can watch it. But basically, one way we can solve this problem, of course, you can do it BFS or DFS way. But uh, in this case, we can use Unify to solve this problem. So basically, Unify supports two operation. operation. Uh, one is define. So basically, that find function is trying to find the parent node uh, of the subset, right? And then we also have a union function that basically unions two subsets, right? Uh, it takes two nodes from two different subsets, and we're going to union them. But if their parents is the same, then we're just going to not perform this operation, right? Uh, we have to have two nodes that have a different parent. So how can we use this to solve this problem? So in this case, what we can do is we can be able to union them, right? In this case, once we union them together, right? So you can see here, uh, once once we call this function, we basically pass in the size of the union. So we define a constructor of union find, we pass in the size of the currently, um, the size of the, the 2D array, right? How many rows we have, that represents how many nodes we have, right? So that's number of nodes. And then based on this, based on this 2D array, we're gonna traverse this 2D array and then for each and every single node, we basically just form that connection, right? Because here you can see no one is connected to no one, right? No one is connected to no two, or no zero is connected to no one, right? So it doesn't matter how you say it, but basically you can see that this, the second node is connected to the first node. And then the third node is not connected to the first node. So we don't form that connection, right? So we can do that. We can use call the union find function, right? So that we can keep it separate. So now let's try to implement this. So basically, I'll create a union find 
uh, instance of union find. So passing is connected dot length. So that's how many nodes we have. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to iterate or traverse the 2D array. So let's make it a variable called in. And basically you can see that the number of rows and number of columns is the same. So we can just iterate in times in, right? So what we're going to do is that for the current element, right? So in this case, for the current element um, is connected to so the i, the node i is connected to node j, right? So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna form that connection if it's true, right? If it's a one, it's true. So if it's connected at i, at j, is true, then what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna call union find dot union, right? We're gonna form this connection, right? These are the nodes, right? These are the nodes. If this is equal to a one we know that this is true there is a connection so we're going to union that connection and then at the end we actually have a uh we actually have a basically a number of components basically like a counter right if you don't know what this if you're kind of confused about what this class does i highly recommend to check out that video about the union find data structure that i did basically this number of components is there to keep track of how many components how many disjoint subsets that we have um, and you can see that after we union them, we basically decrease the number of components, right, that we have because you union two separate co co um, components together. Now it's forming this one. So we decrease the number of components that we have, right? So at the end, we're basically just going to return uh, uf dot uh, number of components, right? So now let's try to uh, run our code. And let's try it with a few more examples. So here you can see we have our success.